Peace. What's going on, bro? Peace, Brother James. Can you hear me? Brother James, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear. Um, trying to figure out where everybody else is so we can begin. They'll be here, man. All in patience. It's um, going to go down. <laughs> and uh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm sharing the right screen. What, what do you see on your screen? I see the, uh, my see Zoom. Solutions, uh, plans, pricing, and contact information, the meetings, webinars, uh, uh, settings, and recordings. Okay, I'm sharing the wrong screen. Let me take a look. Yeah, because this is only my second Zoom. I'm trying to um, get this down path. It's kind of good that they're not here yet. Let me take a, another look around. And uh, somebody else, I think I sent that to them. People are still trying to get, um, oh, he's sending me my email. I already sent him the invitation. Um, yeah, this is going to be a real good one right here, man. I, I went found some other information that's going to be real pertinent to this um, this Zoom meeting. Yeah, I know, man. I know you coming with the nuggets, man. Man, I, I, mean, I know you coming with it, man. Uh, let me try to get back to that screen. Okay, so this is not the screen I want to share. Desktop at that one. All right, so this should be it. Let me see. All right, did, did the screen change, um, James? Still the same, showing the Zoom meeting? Still showing Zoom and the topic and the description. Still showing that. I see your arrow moving with the Google Calendar and everything. It's, that's, what it's, that's what I see. Oh, man. How do I? And I did it so easy the first um, webinar, trying to get back to it. Let me see. It says the one with the calendar is showing. All right, so desktop. All right, so I clicked desktop. Oh, let me see. I got to do this. Okay. All right, did the screen change? This is killing me. All right, let me take another look. Ah, oh, this dude is killing me. He's uh he can't get into the meeting. I already sent him the invite. Let's just, just just log in and use the the, the meeting ID. What is what is he on? Is he on the phone or is he on the laptop? Uh, let me ask him. He 
because if he is on a phone, it'll automatically net connect. If he's on a laptop, you got to download it on. Okay. And then some people just never have used Zoom and they probably just don't understand it. And exactly, exactly. That could be an issue. Uh, let me see. I hope you got it because I don't have time to, to stop. I'm still trying to figure out this screen real quick. Now you sharing right now. Now is it a way that you to stop the sharing? Yes. So do that. All right, and then I can see you right there. Let me try to get back to that uh, screen. Okay. Okay, get out of there. Okay, here it goes. This is the screen I wanted to share. All right, well, what do you see on the screen now? You still there, bro? All right, um, you still there, bro? Um, I lost some. Brother James.
All right, bro, you're back, right? Brother James, you're back, right? Please, bro, you back? Yeah, man, they kicked me off my laptop. So I'm trying to, I just got on my phone. I'm on my phone now. Okay, not a problem. Um, all right, I got you. They, I, don't, I don't know where everybody else is. Um, I don't know if this guy is having a problem with the meeting ID from the link I sent. Well, I didn't have the internet of that. If, if, if the link that you send to him shall already automatically enter him in. I didn't have to, it, it could have been, if he's on his phone, I, I'm trying to figure out because it's a different platform. So uh, just like I said, if he don't got it downloaded on his laptop, uh, he's going to have a problem because he, he, he could be trying to co connect the Zoom, but he don't got the platform downloaded. So okay. Been, like, I didn't have that problem. I just clicked on a link. I didn't enter no ID or nothing. I just clicked on your link, and they connected me. Uh, yeah, it, it's... um. Somebody else is emailing me. They thought they paid for yes for the old webinar, but they actually paid to be on this one and they're not here. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's a lot of coordination. This is, uh, and he's like, man, yeah, I, I think he may not have ever used it before. He's asking me a ton of questions. And I'm just like, like you said, just click the, the link and get in. Mm -hmm. Just, did, he, didn't, he didn't say what he using a phone or a laptop? No, he was showing me that the meeting um, ID was matching, so I sent him another one. Uh, let me see. Uh, actually, this is what it's saying. I think they switched the meeting ID on us. Not sure. Yeah, this this. Yeah. They're going to play around, man, because they don't want this information out, bro. Exactly. And there's people who paid, and then I got to go through a whole process of trying to refund people and do stuff. And it's like, like I said, I took off my day of work. I didn't earn money to pay my bills, and this is what I intended to do. So refunding for something that, you know, not your fault. Announced, and I was like, yo, make sure, you know, it's 3.30, 3.30, 3.30. Mm. All right, we got somebody else just came in. All right, let me see who we got again. Peace, what's going on, sister? Okay. Can you hear me? Hello, sister, can you hear me? She on mute. Tell her to take herself off mute. Okay, you have to unmute yourself first, sis, before you can speak. Uh, let me see. Oh, I think she's speaking in the chat. Okay, she's in the chat. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so the first thing I gotta do is I gotta get my sound up. I don't, it's playing everything really low. I hear you though, Ali, I hear you. Hear it? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah. it's like I, I'm straining to hear what's coming out of the, um, let's see. Okay, here we go. This should help. All right, I think that should be better. If you could say something so I can check the sound on my, my end. Yeah, can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Test. Okay, yeah, it's better. I don't know what it's doing. If I'm playing music, it'd be blasting right now, but I'm I'm listening and it's not playing it loud. Oh, okay, here we go. I got it. All right, turn that up a little bit and that should be better. All right, and it's like, I, I don't even want to begin with just, there's three people. I know there's more people looking to get in on the call. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. 
Ah, mm. uh, yeah, this, this is killing me. I don't know if I should just continue and go, but like, why aren't the people here? Like, those people that paid. Well, the people that have paid, if they're not here, man, I just, you got to send them the link. You know? Yeah. You're going to have to send them the link. You know, it, it's not on you. you. You set it out there. Let's do the work. Let's go to work. And then they yeah, get it. Yeah. I sent the info. You know, I did my part. That's right. Um, all right. Let me see. So let's get into it. So first, I'm going to ask that any of you, I, I think, James, you definitely got the Friday's webinar. I'm not sure if you did, Cam. Yeah, I got it. All right. Were you able to get through the whole thing? Uh, Yeah, I got through the whole thing. I said it was, it was kind of, uh, close to three times I listened to it. Okay. So. This is, um, it's basically, I don't know how to even say it. This might be a prequel or it might be an, uh, I guess a supplement to that video. So it's kind of really important um, that people get the information from that. So I don't have to read over it here. I'm just going to uh, add it on to it. Okay. Um, and for Cam, I'm assuming you didn't get the, you didn't watch the previous um, webinar? Correct. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I want this to be its own separate webinar, I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to um, continue from here. And if you like, like I said, I've made the, the cost for getting these webinars really reasonable because I do want people to get them. I don't want them to be uh, priced out of it. Um, so I would encourage you to go back and get the previous uh, webinar. But from here, I'm going to start and go ahead um, and just go on to the supplement. Overstand. Okay. <clears throat> and I guess first, I just want to um, thank everybody for supporting, uh, for giving me a, a chance. You know, I've been at this information a really long time. And uh, a lot of people were saying like, hey, brother, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're just giving information away and you're not, you're not monetizing it. And um, that should be the point of what we're trying to get at, because I want to be in a position. It doesn't mean I need to be wealthy, but I do need to be generating income from sharing this information so I can have the time and the study to um, to get all this together for everybody. <laughs> so I want to thanks for the support. All right, so I'm going to get into it now. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to get this off of the screen. Okay, so get that out of the way. And get this down. All right. So um, on the screen, I think you should be looking at it says defenses of the estate. Is that correct? Sure. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm teaching from the right screen. Okay. So basically, this webinar is so important because of where everyone, oh, I can't say everyone, but for the most part, our country um, is hurting. Uh, a lot of people um, aren't out, of, they're out of work. A lot of people may be facing uh, foreclosure, may be facing eviction, uh, car repossession, all these type of things, utilities being turned off. So um, the first thing I wanted to say is that a lot of information, as you already know, we've been taught wrong. And mostly I'm going to say uh, our culture overall, because uh, every other culture lives off our ignorance. So. Um, this is what I want to do here to let everybody know that there is remedy for people and that remedy is actually we should be filing bankruptcy. Uh, not just because of what's going on with the country and the, the recession, but it all made sense. This is the separation we've been looking for. Everybody is trying to file this paperwork and put templates and affidavits together to say, hey, look, I am not the estate. I'm not the name. I'm living. I'm breathing. Um, there's such an easy way to do that. And um, that is through Chapter 7 bankruptcy. And <clears throat> I'm going to explain why. Um, basically, of course, I guess everybody here on the call already knows that you have an estate. And an estate is the property of a deceased person. So... 
obviously that's not us. That can't be us. We're not deceased. Um, so when you come into bankruptcy, you're automatically assigned a trustee, which it just made so much clarity because we're running around trying to file uh, form 56s and assign the judge or whoever it is, um, the prosecutor to be the trustee over the matter and to discharge all claims against our bond. And it seems like an uphill fight, an uphill battle. I'm not saying it doesn't work. There may be, have been success, but I'm figuring that process shouldn't be such a fight. So um, when you simplify it, when you file bankruptcy and you're assigned a, a docket number, you are automatically assigned a trustee. So when we hear the words trustee, we understand that there is a trust that we are talking about. And um, this is the trust that the United States created um, with the likeness of our name. Um, so when you bring it here, the first thing that happens, <clears throat> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up for you. I'm going to show you this real quick. Um, and go right here. All right, I'm going to go right here and type this in for you. All right, so this is what a bankruptcy estate is. It's all legal or equitable interests of the debtor and property at the time of the bankruptcy filing. The estate includes all property in which the debtor has an interest, even if it is owned or held by another person. So that's why I say I like the simplicity of this. Sometimes it, it seems like people who are teaching this, you have to force what you're trying to teach on other people. And that, that just doesn't make sense. This should be flowing, it should be easy. So the United States owns our estate and therefore they are responsible for all the obligations of the estate. They literally have to take care of it. So this definition says it, the estate includes all property in which the debtor. So this is the separation. The living is the debtor the the dead the deceased is the estate so in bankruptcy that uh separation is already recognized you don't have to force this on any judge they clearly completely understand what we are saying um it says in which the debtor has an interest even if it is owned or held by another person so these estates are held by the united states um there's another definition i wanted to it might be further in here um let me see because that all right that wasn't it there's a, a better definition of this that i wanted to see uh where was that i think it was here um All right, I like this. I think I know exactly where to get this. All right. Um, I just want you to see the beautiful words that are said about um, our estate and ourselves. So I just want to get this definition. All right, I think this is what I was looking for. Um, right here, okay. So the estate, it says separate taxable entity. There's the separation that everybody is looking for and they keep fighting and trying to push it and force it. And judges um, have been um, finding people in contempt and locking them up for speaking what is considered sovereign citizen nonsense, basically. And I, I was like, this, this just doesn't make sense. Why is it so hard? But when you come into bankruptcy, you don't even have to do a lot of speaking because this is what's understood already. 
everybody already knows that you are not your estate, but we were just in the wrong place trying to tell the wrong people. So here it says, when an individual files a bankruptcy petition under chapter seven or 11, the bankruptcy estate is treated as a separate taxable entity from the debtor. So I know usually we've been taught debtor is a bad word, but here it's completely telling you that you are separate from the entity, which is the estate. The court appointed trustee or the debtor in possession is responsible for preparing and filing all of the bankruptcy estate's tax returns. And this was another thing that we were talking about. We were like, well, if we're filing the wrong tax forms, we shouldn't be filing the 1040, we should be filing the 1041. So uh, this is what's so beautiful. We've been told to get an estate number, which is, um, is not the same exact thing as a bankruptcy estate number. They're totally different things. When you finish filing the, the taxes on a bankruptcy estate, that estate is done. It's a wrap. That should be your last filing on that. Um, and it, at that point, it will liquidate all the assets of the estate. Um, and it says U.S. income tax return for estates and trusts and paying its taxes because everything is a tax liability uh, issue or for non-assessment of taxes. The debtor remains responsible for filing his or her own returns on form 1040. So you see how this showing the separation? You, the debtor, the living, has to file a 1040, but the estate files the 1041. Um, and paying taxes on income that does not belong to the estate. So that's the separation right there that um, everybody has been just doing it. I don't even know if I want to say wrong, but it's just, um, it just seems like a lot of stuff to be doing and so much fighting. <clears throat> So this is something that people don't understand. When you file a bankruptcy proceeding, um, you have defenses. It's not like autopilot. You file a bankruptcy petition and then let the courts and the trustee do whatever they want. It, it's almost one of them things. Um, uh, if you were at Burger King and you ordered a burger and you don't like pickles, but you wanted mustard instead of mayo, they don't know this until you tell them. So when they make your sandwich, it's still going to have pickles and it's going to have mayo instead of mustard. So those who come into bankruptcy court and don't know who they are and their rights and they don't exert their rights, they're considered waived. Um, oh, there's more people in the group. Uh, let me take a look. Sorry about I was that. switching. I was switching over from my phone to my laptop, brother. Okay, because it said, uh, okay, I got you, Just for people. Um, all right, so, um, so yeah, it's so much easier if you come in and you know how to exert your, your rights and who you are. So it says, the estate shall have the benefit of any defense available to the debtor as against any entity other than the estate, including statute of limitation, statutes of frauds, usury, and other personal defenses. A waiver of any such defense by the debtor after the commencement of the case does not bind the estate. You see how there's so much separation of the estate and, and, and bankruptcy law. And um, I never really took a look at bankruptcy law, I guess for two reasons. Uh, none of the gurus was instructing us to look at this, one, and two, um, I never thought I'd have a need to file bankruptcy. That's another reason. I guess the other reason is um, we've been taught as a group of people that it's shameful to file bankruptcy. So even those who do file bankruptcy, um, we don't tell anyone publicly. So that's why I'm doing this and um, not doing it publicly but I think this is something that should be taught privately. So um, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna show you how you can use the UCC in bankruptcy to your advantage. So this is, um, this is the bankruptcy code, the Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure. 
Rule 6009, prosecution and defense of proceedings by trustee or debtor in possession. And like I said, I love how all these words fit. The trustee is there, so you know we're talking about the trust. They're administrating uh, the trust for the estate because the estate is the, the beneficiary. So it says, with or without court approval, the trustee or debtor in possession. And see how it says debtor in possession? Your estate is like a captured vessel. So it says debtor in possession because you have the birth certificate. You went back and you claimed the certificate of live birth. So you are in possession of the title for the estate. It says may prosecute or may enter an appearance and defend any pending action or proceeding by or against the debtor or commence and prosecute any action or proceeding in behalf of the estate before any tribunal. So see how, again, the separation is there against the debtor or any proceeding in behalf of the estate. So you get to defend the estate. Um, I'm gonna go here. It's this one. <laughs> um, all right, this one is a little longer, but um, it's a part of the uh, recording. So if anybody watching the recording wants to go and read this, but this is again, it's called adversary proceedings, which is something you want to do in uh, bankruptcy. And the great thing about it is that you can initiate adversary proceedings or the trustee can. And I think I think it's a trustee, the judge or the debtor in possession can initiate one of these. And this is where you can win and get discharges of student loans, which they say are not dischargeable for taxes that they say are non-dischargeable. So all of these issues we've been worrying about in life and we just thought we were stuck with them like herpes um, is not true. You know, we've been taught wrong and, and no one was going to teach you this stuff until you went out and learned it or in, in this case, someone such as myself went and learned all this stuff and is uh, willing to teach it. So uh, I'm gonna go, I think, am I ready to go there yet? I'm gonna show you something. All right, so we're gonna go over here. <clears throat> Article nine, uh, section 625, remedies for secured parties failure to comply with article. Now, this is so important I'm going to see if I still got it up. This has a lot to do with the, um, all right, it's not there. Um, has a lot to do with the other, um, the other uh, webinar that I did the other day. So like I said, this is kind of like a continuation. So what happens whenever you do a transaction is um, they are assigning their account receivables to another party. Um, and that is called that that process of what they're doing is called factoring. So it's F A C T. Um, I think it's O R I N G factoring. Um, let me see. All right. So when they do that, they're supposed to. Um, you have an interest in the money that they're um, obtaining for your note, you gave them your note and they stole it. They never told you that it, it was valuable and that they're gonna sell it to someone and get the face value of the instrument. So literally when you're purchasing a car or a house and like the, the house might've been for 425,000, no one told you that that promissory note was literally a check for 425,000. If they told you that, you would have never left that on the table. You said, well, if it's worth that much, why don't we just settle the deal right here and the house would be mine and you take the note. <clears throat> so this is what this article right here is about. I just wanted to give you an overview so you understand this. So um, let me see. So it says judicial orders concerning non-compliance. So this is um, the secured party, which would be the lien holder or the, the car dealership or the mortgage broker in that regard. It says it is established that a secured party is not proceeding in accordance with this article, excuse me, 
a court may order or restrain collection because they're collecting on these notes as servicers. So an order from the court may restrain collection enforcement of that note or a retail and, um, installment agreement or disposition of collateral on appropriate terms and conditions. The collateral that we're speaking about right here is the note. It's the promissory note, the mortgage. The mortgage itself on the face of it calls the mortgage a security instrument, which is a financial asset. So to go down, you get to get damages for non-compliance. A person is liable for damages in the amount of any loss caused by a failure to comply with this article. So just like I said, on the face value, a mortgage or a promissory note or a retail installment contract or a lease from your apartment is um, a check. So the face value of whatever that check was, if you bought a brand new Bentley for 326,000, that would be the amount of the loss because they took that um, and never gave you that value. So you could actually sue for damages in that amount. It says loss caused by a failure to comply may include loss resulting from the debtor's inability to obtain, to obtain or increase costs of alternative financing. So um, financing is something that um, I spoke about this a few times, but it's funny how it never registered in, in, a, in a person's mind. When you go into a um, car dealership and they said that we're going to try to, or, or we're going to obtain financing for you to purchase this vehicle. They're, they usually ask you, once they come up with your credit check and you get a price on the vehicle, they're going to ask you a question. They're going to say, how will you be paying for this vehicle today? Are you going to uh, lease the vehicle? Are you going to pay outright? Or are you going to finance the car? And um, due to our financial illiteracy, we didn't understand that financing me, are you going to bring the money to the table to pay for this transaction? So that's what that basically means. They literally take the note that you're going to give them. They sell it to somebody to settle their debt. So when you walk away from the car dealership, you don't owe the car dealership anymore, uh, any money. And they're the one that sold you the vehicle. So that right there should be an indication that they already got paid. Um, but because we don't understand these terms, these financial terms of financing means you're bringing the money, not a lender. <clears throat> so it says persons entitled to recover damages, statutory damages and consumer goods transactions. Because everything we're doing out here is consumer goods. When we're buying things with our credit card, debit card, whatever it may be, money, cash, these are consumer goods if it's not being purchased with a business entity. So um, it says a person that at the time of the failure was a debtor, was an obligor or held a security interest in or other lien on the collateral may recover damages under subsection B for its loss. And if the collateral is consumer goods, so we might, I'm just gonna look at the consumer goods because I wanna make sure it includes the promissory note, which it should. Um, means a consumer transaction in which an individual incurs an obligation primarily for personal, family, or household purposes and a security interest in consumer goods secures the obligation. So this right here, um, I I'm just going to assume that you don't know what it means. I'm just going to explain it to make sure that you have clarity. This line right here is telling you that the note pays for the um, entire transaction. And this is something that we say a lot and nobody can show the proof of it. They're saying when we sign or we give our signature, our signature was payment. So this literally says it, a security interest in consumer goods secures the obligation. The note will totally take care of any obligation. And um, let me see. While we're at it, I'm going to, no, it's not in here. 
because I was going to show you the difference between, um, okay, I know where I got to go get it. There's debtor and then there's an account debtor. And I'm going to show you the difference between the two of them. So debtor means a person having an interest other than a security interest or other lien in the collateral, whether or not the person is an obligor. And then it says <clears throat> a debtor can also be a seller of accounts, chattel paper, payment intangibles, or promissory notes. So this right here lets you know that this can be the car dealer or the mortgage broker. Because remember, they're selling their accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is the debt that they say you owe that you're going to make payments on monthly payments for 60 months. That's an account receivable because they're going to be receiving money. It's going to generate money. So the person who is a seller of accounts, chattel papers, payment intangibles, promissory notes. So that's why this includes the mortgage broker too, because you're going to execute a promissory note and a mortgage that day. Um, so a debtor doesn't have to always be us on the other side of that transaction. And then I'm going to show you this one. This is called an account debtor. And these are two different things. Here we go. Account debtor means a person obligated on an account, chattel paper, or payment intangible. The term does not include persons obligated to pay a negotiable instrument. So hopefully I'm hoping you see what it just said right there. I'm gonna finish it, I'm gonna go over it again. Even if the instrument constitutes part of chattel paper. So this literally lets you know that you in the transaction are not an account debtor and that there's a debtor and account debtor and there's two different, completely different things. So you're, you're the person who's presumed to be obligated on an account. So it means it does not mean you. It does not mean, the term does not include persons obligated to pay a negotiable instrument. So that's the beautiful thing. And I found this just a couple of days ago, just reading here, because I, it's always good to click in and read these words, all these blue hyperlinks and understand them. And then it helps the reading uh, so much better. So when I understood the difference between account debtor and a, a debtor, now, when talking with these people, when you're sitting at the table, it should make things go a whole different way where you don't have to end up buying something, then getting billed for it monthly and keep writing in all these letters to dispute um, that you're not obligated to pay on these transactions. Just using the right words and, and, and codes here um, puts everything in the right perspective. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go down a little further. Uh, where was we at? Was the debtor obligor? We read that. Um, if the collateral is consumer goods, a person that was a debtor or a secondary obligor at the time a secure party failed to comply with this part may recover for that failure in any event an amount not less than the credit service charge plus 10% of the principal amount of the obligation or the time price differential plus 10% of the cash price. Because remember, they sell these um, notes uh, for cash. They're liquidated. So it shows you all the statutory damages and it gives you amounts. It may recover $500 in each case from a person that fails to comply with section 9208, um, files a record that the person is not entitled to file under section so this is like when a person is filing a lien that they are not entitled to uh, file because they never um, gave consideration to you. So it says part of a pattern or consistent with a practice of non-compliance, which they do all, all day, every day. Um, let me see. If a secure party fails to comply with their request regarding a list of collateral or a statement of account under section 9210, the secure party may claim a security interest only as shown in the list or statement included in the request as against a person that is reasonably misled by the failure. That would be us. We are always misled in these transactions. Um, so I'm going to go here. 
Agreement not to assert defenses against assigning. Now, this is important because remember, there's there's um, there's multiple ways of, of how you can proceed with this. Sometimes you might not have to always go to bankruptcy, but um, this is basically the equivalent of what's called a hold harmless agreement. When you um, contact these people and let them know that I know what happened and you show them the proof, all this proof in these codes and everything I just showed you and definitions, you show them the proof Sometimes the reason why you don't get remedy or they don't respond to you is because a response could be considered or construed as an admission of guilt. And with that admission of guilt, as I just read, um, they're liable for damages. And that's not the position they want to be. So you have to let them know I will hold you harmless in exchange for settling of my account and adjusting the um, the account entries. So this is saying the same thing. It's like a whole harmless agreement, but it's um, agreement not to assert defenses against assignee. So subsection B, agreement not to assert claim or defense, except as otherwise provided in this section, an agreement between an account debtor, and that's why I'm glad I went over that for you and let you know the difference, and an assignor um, so an assignor is basically the car dealer because an assignee would be your lien holder uh, servicer. So that's the difference between those words. Not to assert against an assignee, so that would be the servicer, any claim or defense that the account debtor may have against the assignor is enforceable by an assignee that takes an assignment. So this is all exactly what happens because at the car dealership, it's assigned immediately to the assignee for value in good faith without notice of a claim of a property or possessory right to the property assigned. That's where we come in at because uh, we, you probably never make a notice of a claim that you have against the property or the property assigned. Now, remember, the, the property assigned isn't the car, it isn't the house, it isn't the boat, it isn't any of those things. The property, which they didn't tell you is called property, is the note. It's the note, it's the mortgage, it's the retail installment agreement contract that you signed at the dealer, that long yellow form. That was the property that was assigned. So, um, of course, you never made notice of a claim on that property. So it says, without notice of a de defense or claim and recoupment, and this is powerful, that claim recoupment means everything that they um, earn from selling those notes, they have to return to you. And it's only after you've made them aware or made a claim. Most people never make a claim because most people don't um, understand our monetary uh, system of the type that may be asserted against a person entitled to enforce a negotiable instrument. Remember that the paperwork that I'm talking about, those are negotiable instruments. They can be negotiated. And this can't be disputed because sometimes in the agreement itself, it tells you we reserve the right to sell your account. So they're already indicating within the, the paperwork what their intents are. So subsection B does not apply to defenses of a type that may be asserted against a holder in due course of a negotiable instrument under subsection 3305B. So I haven't read that. Um, I'll, I'll leave some homework for you, but I'll, I'm going over. I want you to see that you do have standing in different ways. So this is a beautiful one. Omission of required statement in consumer transaction. In a consumer transaction, if a record evidences the account debtor's obligation, this is powerful. This is no dispute in this stuff. It's telling you right here. If a record evidences the account debtor's obligation, account debtor is being the car dealership or the mortgage broker. Law other than this article requires that the record include in a statement to the effect that the rights of an assignee are subject to claims or defenses that the account debtor could assert against the original obligee and the record does not include such a statement 
the record has the same effect as if the record included such a statement and the account debtor may assert against the assignee those claims and defenses that would have been available if the record included such a statement. Excuse me. This section is subject to law other than this article, which establishes a different rule for an account debtor who is an individual and who incurred the obligation primarily for personal, family, or household purposes. <laughs> Except as otherwise provided in subsection D, this, sub, this section does not displace law other than this article, which gives effect to an agreement by the account debtor not to assert a claim or defense against an assignee. And that's why this is so powerful, this right here. Because this is what everybody's worried about. You know, just don't sue me. Okay, you figured me out. No need to alert the entire world. Let's settle this. I will release the lien. I will settle your account, whatever it may be. Just don't um, sue me. And I want to get this in writing that you promise uh, not to bring a claim against me. So that's uh, a part, a powerful part of your remedy that I, I don't hear people speaking about much. Um, so I got something else here for you. And this is here. And again, most of this is just going to be homework for you, but I just wanted to show you um, what I found. So this is under the UCC and under part seven, it's all your remedies. So again, remedies are very powerful. They're very helpful. And I don't think we, we talk about them enough. So I want to, um, there was one in particular when I looked through this list, it popped out at me and I wanted to uh, discuss I'm trying to make sure. All right, it could be this one. Um, I think I might go through about a few of these. Um, one of the things you want to know about when you're trying to get remedy, and this is in any court, you want to pursue equitable remedies. And a lot of times um, when we when we go and make a claim, our mind is always set on money, 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 money. But money is not a equitable remedy. Um, some of your equitable remedies include right here, a right to rescission, uh, specific performance or replevin, or uh, injunction. These are um, equitable defenses. And these are the type that you want to express because then you switch the court from a um, uh, either a civil or criminal court into a court of equity. And that's where you want to be. So um, let me see. So for right here, non-delivery. So this is buyer's damages for non-delivery or repudiation. <clears throat> so repudiating the contract is powerful. Hopefully we're going to read in here and it'll give you a little light of what uh, repudiation is. Subject to the provisions of this article with respect to proof of market price, because remember, um, all um, instruments are negotiated at market price. The measure of damages for non-delivery or repudiation by the seller is the difference between the market price at the time when the buyer learned of the breach and the contract price together with any incidental and consequential damages provided in this article but less expenses saved in the consequence of a seller's breach. So the seller breached the contract by not fulfilling his obligation to provide you with financing. It says market prices to be determined as the place for tender. And, you know, basically they were saying you were supposed to make your tender at the, the dealership, but they tell you no payment is due right now unless it's a down payment or something. And within, I guess, 40 days, they send you your statement where it's telling you where you can make tender. In cases of rejection after arrival or revocation of acceptance. So that's like if they refuse or at some point they um, they don't they no longer want to accept your 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 contracts, which they never give them back, but they just tell you to return the car and they keep this anyway. As of the place of arrival. <laughs> so 
go here. We got that one. And what else was I looking at? Security interest and check goods. All right, I think I'm gonna go here. Um, yeah, we'll read this one. I think one more after that. All right, so these, like again, very powerful. This deals with equity, courts of equity. Specific performance may be decreed where the goods are unique or in other proper circumstances. The decree for specific performance may include such terms and conditions as to payment of the price. That's why I like that. This is how you get your money back. Damages, so you can probably get the price of payment and damages or other relief as the court may deem just. Now, this is so funny where um, a lot of courts that we deal with state that um, they don't deal with the UCC. So I'm literally showing you right here where that's not true and how and where you can enforce this on the court. It says the buyer has a right of replevin for goods identified to the contract if after reasonable effort, he is unable to affect cover for such goods or the circumstances reasonably indicate that such effort will be unavailing or if the goods have been shipped under reservation and satisfaction of the security interest in them has been made or tendered. So tender is always a substitution for the word payment. So um, replevin means you can, um, Replevin is the right to, uh, I guess, redeem or to take back your contracts. Whenever deals go sour, we never stop to think of getting back those contracts. So those contracts still get sold. Um, this is the same whether you, um, you're told that you, your credit wasn't approved or we couldn't get you financed. They still keep that paperwork. And trust me, those papers are checks. So we will go down. We read that one. All right, I think I'm going to go to this one. All right, so this one was a beautiful one. I found this uh, quite a while back. Effect of cancellation or rescission on claims for antecedent breach. So this is one where you anticipated the breach was going to happen. And the breach that we are discussing is um, the dealership or the broker not settling your account right then and there. So that's um, where you anticipated this breach to happen. Now that you're informed and you understand how these um, transactions occur, you already know in every transaction you enter that they are um, going to breach it. So unless the contrary intention clearly appears, expressions of cancellation or rescission, so the right of rescission is so powerful, of the contract or the like shall not be construed as a renunciation or discharge of any claim and damages for antecedent breach. So what this is saying is what I was just speaking about earlier. Sometimes in order to get your remedy, when you're explaining to them how the transaction really happened and that you're owed um, an obligation or you're owed your property, you have to make it clear that in exchange I will release you of any uh, claims or defenses. And I think I've heard a, a few stories of people actually saying that they actually got their remedy that way. And so it, it's, it's not as hard as everybody makes it out. Everybody is like, hey, can you teach me how to discharge? Can you teach me how to discharge? Um, I, I think you would have more success if you um, can intelligently explain the transaction, how it happened, and then uh, make promise to release them. Because I, you know, who has time to sit and sue everybody? Because this is how this monetary system works. This you would have to run around and just sue everybody, and that would just take up all your time. And how could you enjoy life if you're running around in court all day? So these are very powerful things. Uh, let me see if I got anything else I'm going to give you before I close uh, the meeting. Um, so we can go here. Some people want to call it fraud. Let's see what it says. So remedies for material misrepresentation. And that's a beautiful word because that describes it perfectly. Or fraud include all remedies available under this article for non-fraudulent breach. 
neither rescission or a claim for rescission of the contract for sale. And we're going to click that in a minute because that's, that's literally what I'm, I'm telling you that every contract you sign as being a sign, assignment means sale, nor rejection or return of the goods shall bar or be deemed inconsistent with a claim for damages or other remedy. So they're saying that you still can uh, do that, like I said, unless you release them. So we're going to, um, we're going to read contract for sale. All right, right here in this article, unless the context otherwise requires contract and agreement are limited to those relating to the present or future sale of goods. <clears throat> and we're going to click goods because I'm almost guaranteed goods is going to say promissory notes, negotiable instruments, all those things includes both a present sale of goods and a contract to sell goods at a future time. A sale consists in the passing of title from the seller to the buyer for a price. And that's when um, most times, especially if you're buying a brand new vehicle, that vehicle has never been titled and you will be the first person that that car will be titled in the name of. So that's why it says consists of, um, a sale consists in the passing of title from the seller to the buyer for a price. A present sale means a sale which is accomplished by the making of the contract. So this happens on every, um, every transaction. Um, so let me get to goods. All right, goods means all things, including specially manufactured goods which are movable at the time of identification to the contract for sale other than the money in which the price is to be paid investment securities article 8 and things in action so those are um these are goods and this is the only um definition i even need to deal with because this is what we're talking about in those transactions these are investment securities so goods also includes the unborn young of animals and growing crops and other identified things attached to realty as described in the section on goods to be severed from realty. But that's where we're going to focus at. Investment securities, they're investment securities because the car dealership is going to raise the money to pay for um, uh, how you say it, goods on consignment. Because all the cars on the lot are not owned by the dealer. So the dealer could never properly be um, the creditor. And that's why he gets the contracts and immediately resigns them. It, it's a sign immediately as soon as you purchase it. Um, it's like a game of hot potato. And then he's um, assigning a contract without recourse, which means he has no further liability and that um, he's pretty much barring you from making any claims against the dealership, which is where your claim actually needs to be because he's the proper person to make the claim about. He promised you a loan that you never received. So he put an incident breach as we just discussed in the other um, definition. So that's why I was trying to tell people this um, webinar is so important because I'm, I'm giving you the tea, literally. I mean, some of the most powerful things is not me doing something on your behalf. It's teaching you how to understand it so you know how to execute properly um, when you are in transactions. So I'm going to give one last jewel. Um, and it's probably, it's, it's probably one of the most uh, it's a very powerful jewel. I'm just going to say that I left it to the end and, um, and I want people to see and know that they're getting a lot of value for their money um, and understanding that I'm underpricing this information that I'm presenting. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you mortgage. All right, so I'm gonna go right here to images. Hopefully I found what I needed. Uh, I don't think I did. 
All right. Here we go from yesterday's searches. So I'm gonna go right here. <laughs> All right, just waiting for it to load. And this is funny. This is not my uh, website or I don't endorse this website or anything. Um, but I wanted you to um, um, wanted you to see. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Let me make sure. Um, sorry about that. Somebody just asked, was I recording? And I hope that answer is yes. I'm trying to look and see. I do see the light blinking, so I hope I, I am recording. Um, yeah, it's on there. It's on there. It's recording? It's recording. It's recording, Ali. You good. Okay. Beautiful. Cause I would hate to lose all this information because uh, I guess I'm doing okay on this uh, on this recording. All right, so I'm gonna show you here. Again, I'm gonna make a disclaimer. This is not my, my website, I just found it randomly. I just wanted to show you this image, but I like what they're already speaking about. Endorse mortgage note. This is proof that your house is paid in full when you sign the note. See the endorsement paid to the order of Lehman Brothers. The loan is a lie and the mortgage is a fraud. And um, this is what you would see if you didn't leave the the closing room before uh, they did this to your your promissory note. So this is what um, there's a saying that I always use and I tell people and it's hilarious, but it's so true. If um, if you're at a zoo <clears throat> and you're walking by the gorilla cage and the gorilla cage uh, the gorilla picks up some some crap and throws it at you. So of course you didn't come in the zoo orange with crap. You didn't bring your own crap to the zoo. So what are you going to do? You pick up the gorilla's crap and you throw it back at them. So this is a metaphor for saying if this is what they're doing to your notes, right? And um, this is how they're getting paid and selling your notes. I want you to know that when you start buying cars and houses, this is how this is called a qualified endorsement. And this is how you need to start um, signing your contracts, whether it's an apartment lease, whether you're buying a car, um, whether it is um, a, a contract to, um, to be issued a credit card, all these things. This is how you should be signing. Pay to the order of, you name your payee to make sure that they get paid, and then you um, put without recourse. And as we just discussed, without recourse means is that um, you are exempt from liability. Um, I know I shouldn't be telling you this because I don't want to give you any ideals, but I'm, I'm letting you know um, I'm, I don't advise you to do this. I'm going to say this is for educational purposes. But if you were to write a check, you were in a bind, didn't have enough money to get to the week, you needed to get pampers, some baby milk, food, whatever, gas in the car, and you took a check that you know um, would not clear and you signed it without recourse, did you know that your bank cannot, um, probably not, I'm going to say probably on that part, charge you an overdraft fee, but I know they definitely could not draw this amount from your uh, checking account or pursue you or sue you in any court for any amount um, that that check did not cover. So again, that was not advice, that was just educational purposes. But this is how you have to sign um, when you're buying cars, houses. You make sure that the person that you are dealing with, whoever name is the broker or the car dealership, you put their name right there. So you say pay, and you can write this out. This is a stamp, but I'm saying you can write this. Even if you get a pay to the order without recourse stamp, and leave a blank just to write in the name of whoever you're paying. And then you have to put by, you sign your name and your, your position. So your position would be authorized uh, agent, I would put. And make sure that it's signed and that you just turn that uh, promissory note or agreement into a check. 
And, and this is so funny because, um, again, like I said from the beginning, I see so many people teaching and trying to do things that seems forced. It doesn't seem natural. How to change your, your coupon from your statement into a money order. You literally can take, again, the same analogy of picking up the monkey's crap and throwing it back at them. This is the same agreement that they're going to take and monetize and sell it. So they threw it at you, just take it, sign it properly the way they're going to do it and give it back to them. And now they have to accept it as payment because it, it literally is no matter, no matter the dollar amount. That's why I'm not discussing dollar amount. If that house you're buying was a million point four, um, they're still going to put this on it and negotiate it um, at a discount. They won't get a million four, but they'll probably get 800,000, maybe less, and they'll sell it and what that does is it leaves room and makes it uh, it makes it appealing for the buyer of that note, that instrument, to have room in case you default on the payments or something goes wrong or something. At least they're not out of all their money because they're going to probably collect on you for a while. Um, they're going to have you're going to have insurance on that property or car, which is going to name them as the um, party of interest, so they get paid if you total that car. Um, they're named on the insurance. They're still going to get paid. There's so many ways for them to get paid. So they really don't have risk because remember, they didn't, um, they didn't put up anything anyway. Their note was uh, gifted to them because out of ignorance, we didn't know it was valuable. So this was a really heavy jewel worth, like I said, way more than the, the $20 investment for, um, for this webinar to just know this information right here was powerful. And, and more likely, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing it's gonna work in uh, every situation. And the only reason for is that these people are crooks. They're trying to swindle you out of your note for free. And if you sign this this way, there's no coming back to you. They can never, if you, this was a house, they can't foreclose on you. They can't even place the lien on the house if you sign the note this way. So I'm not guaranteeing it, but I'm saying if you are allowed to sign at closing or whenever this way and they accept it, that's it. It's a wrap. That car is yours. You will always notice that they will never lean that car if you sign this way. They will never lean that house if you sign this way. And like I said, I just think that is powerful in itself. Um, so I know uh, we covered a lot of information, so I'm just going to, um, if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and unmute and uh, just let me know what you think or if you have questions on anything that might not have been clear. You still there, guys? Does anybody have any questions about? Uh, yeah, I'm still here, man. I'm still here. All right. Uh, anybody have any questions or? No, I mean, mean, can you hear me? Yes, I can. No, I don't have any questions. It's just more to the point of that we got to. For me, I don't know about anybody else, but I got to get go back over it. And just like the uh, the other one on Friday, I have to keep putting in, and, and just like you said clicking on them hyperlink um, to get the more of the definitions down and just in case they do come up, you know, when we going through this type of uh, process. Okay. Um, but um, I'm a person just, you know, after you teach, I got to go back over, you know, definitely because it, it's not because you're going fast. It's the, Um, it, it, it faded out a little bit. Good to have a recourse. Um, you know, Ali. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well, most, I mean, it's more it's going to take for us to just, uh, 
Okay. Um, and uh, really grasp uh, all the information, what you're saying, because I know about the without recourse, but I never knew the definition, how you broke it down, you know. And plus, a lot of people put without, uh, the, for the 308 dash mm -hmm. uh, without recourse. They put that mm -hmm. with, you know, but a lot, I heard a lot of people don't get, you know, they don't get remedy with that. So exactly. it's different the way that you said it. It's a little bit different. Yep. Because wow. I think they they putting too much on there anyway. Mm-hmm. It's basically, and I think this an analogy will probably stay in your head. If a monkey throws crap at you, you pick it up and throw the monkey's crap back at it. So mm. if they're writing without recourse and that's it, they're not doing without prejudice, uh, UCC 308, 207, blah, 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 mm. blah, 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 without the United mm. States Treasury, keep it simple. Throw back at them what they threw at you. Mm. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, uh, it, it's laughable now, all the stuff I went through, but people had us buying bond paper with the fancy little uh, trimmings around the edges and uh, <laughs> to make these indemnity bonds to charge back. And like we were buying micro ink, uh, you know, the mi micro ink, I think it's called, all this crazy uh -huh. stuff that we thought the paper had to be special and be able to levitate. Um, they are literally taking um, H&P, uh, was it 90 weight or I don't know if it's 90 weight or no, no, it's a 20, 20 weight, um, uh, white bright paper and printing it on a laser printer and just getting you to sign it. And that is money. You know, so it's just laughable at the stuff that we were taught. And because um, my I myself back then was just doing as I was um, taught and told and not discovering for myself. So that's why I'm glad um, after a while, you know, the, the gurus and stuff at that time, they, they led me to a certain point where you get to a crossroad and you'll see a fork in the road and you you got to ask yourself, do you want to continue to follow um, that guru or that guru went white right, but look at the left and I see a light down at the end and, and you get curious. And so um, that's one thing about myself. I realized that um, I'm not here to be like a permanent teacher. At some point, I do want you to grow into your own and um, maybe have me start to look at you and, and to learn things as well. Um, it's about passing the torch, being a, um, you know, passing the torch, being a, a torch bearer. Um, I don't want to be like, uh, how you say it? I don't want it to be like, if anything were to happen to me and that people would just feel lost and like they couldn't go any further, I, I want to um, raise a nation of, of leaders and uh, people who are not afraid to just discover and, and, and try things. So I, I think that's the legacy I want to leave behind. I don't want the people to be like, you know, well, who's going to teach us now? You know, I, I want you to teach yourself. Um, I see you on mute. Did you want to interject? Um, no, not really. Just to the point that um, you're absolutely right. We got to we got to learn and then we got to pass, pass it on. Mm hmm. And part of everything that, you know, I believe that a man is worthy of his heart. I believe that because everything that I'd invested in, it comes back to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's more to the time of like, we having time to really indulge in what's being taught. And I don't know everybody's situation. So you really got to be disciplined into really having your own personal time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got a wife and, I have a wife and kids. So, I got to make time for them, mm -hmm. and I got to make time for me. So uh, all of the work's hand in hand. So um, I, the only thing I got to say is, man, I appreciate your time uh, and, and the information that you're giving, and I know it's just it's going to be greater to come, but now, you you know, it's, it's even up to me to even indulge even in more, you know, because just like you said, I might find something, and I have to run the past you and get, you know, your intellect and what, what you feel from what I found. You know, 
That's how it's supposed to be at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, That's all I got to say. Okay. How about you, Brother Cam? Brother Cam, you still there? Brother Cam, you still on the call? I don't know if he's still there. Or... Um, so, I see him. Yeah, I was trying to unmute his uh, his mic. It won't won't let me. Um, but the the thing I guess I wanted to add in closing, I'm gonna get out of here. I uh, got a couple of things to tend to. <clears throat> is that um not saying that you know you can invest in everybody because everybody isn't a man of, of morals and ethics and of their word and maybe they just don't have that um there's a burning desire for me to see our people in a better place um i almost feel in a sense like how michael jordan felt about you know the bulls and um he he had to build a team he went through some crappy uh, teammates until you know he, him and Jerry just started firing people and just bringing in new talent um, to so they can build up and they got to the championship bulls um, this is my vision for us I, I want to uh, other coaches to look at us uh, and take us serious on a high regard again and I'm definitely saying again we've been here before uh, but we fell far from grace, and um, I, I want to do my part. I'm not saying I'm Michael Jordan. I'm gonna carry the whole race, but I'm saying I'm I'm I I want my footprints to uh, definitely be seen that I was uh, active and and doing my my part uh, to uh, raise our awareness. You know, I'm not gonna clown us and put us down and call us dumb or ignorant. I'm just going to um, uplift us. And when we look back, then we can talk about where we were consciously. But um, until that time, I'm just going to keep continuing to uplift us. And so I, I definitely thank those who are um, supporting me to give me time. To, like a lot of people got to realize I need the time and space to be able to um, study. I study like a madman. And sometimes it gets in the way of my, um, my relationship. You know, it's like you said, you, you got to find a balance but I'm so in love with it. I'm so passionate about it that it does interfere with my life. So um, sometimes it caused me to lose money and everything. So that's why I'm here and I realize I have to start to monetize um, what I do. And um, at the same time, I have to feel pride in giving value. I don't, I don't want you to walk away and be like, man, I pay you my money, man. This is the same old stuff I've been learning for years and I, I don't, I want you to appreciate and, 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 and feel great about what you walk away with. And so again, that's why I say I appreciate you for um, supporting and believing in me. And, um, and we're gonna be doing a lot more. This is what I'm gonna be doing now. A lot more uh, webinars, different ones. And I'm gonna show you guys how to become independent. I'm not trying to raise a, 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 you know, a, a following or a group of people who are dependents. Brother James. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, no, I saw you You had unmuted. Wasn't sure if you were um, No, I'm just taking in everything you're saying, man. Um, I know we're still on recording, but, you know, we'll chop it up. Say some things to you. All right, definitely, man. Um, so hopefully I'll try to get this video out to everyone who, um, who did register for the video. Um, don't know what happened, but like I said, it, it didn't matter if it was going to be me and you in here alone. Um, I still was mm -hmm. going to give it my all and do my best. Um, and, you know, so it, it's not an ego thing with me. It's not like I needed to have 400 people or I wasn't going to come out and do it. You know, it didn't matter. It's just, um, this is what I do. All right. All right, man. All right, brother. Um, with that being said, I'm not sure where Cam is at, but uh, I'm going to close the Zoom meeting at this time. And again, appreciate you. Thanks for coming. And um, and we're going to be doing it again soon. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. All right, brother. Peace and light.